Welcome to Inside the NCAA. I'm Corbin McGuire. The 2022 NCAA convention is coming up January 19th through the 22nd in Indianapolis. And it's going to be a busy one with an association-wide vote on Thursday on a new constitution, in addition to business being conducted in all three divisions throughout the week. I'm pleased to be joined by NCAA Vice President of Division II, Terry Steve Grinnell, to talk through all th things Division II that week. Terry, thanks for joining us, and just how are you feeling going into this convention? Yeah, well, Corbin, great to, to be with you. So I think, you know, I'm excited to be able to be able to gather in person um, with the Division II membership this year. We'll certainly do it in a safe um, way with everything that's, that's going on, but I think our, our D2 membership appreciates the relationships that they build with each other, so this is a great opportunity for them. Um, to interact with each other and also to see some people that one we haven't seen in a while and others that we really, really don't get to see um, every year. Um, this also is a good opportunity to sort of celebrate the division, its accomplishments from the past year, um, obviously get some business for the division completed, but also to celebrate um, a full year of championships for our student athletes, but then also to talk about what's to come in 2022. Well, obviously, the big ticket item that week will be the associ association-wide vote on the new Constitution. But as you mentioned, there, there's a lot of business to be done and at the divisional level as well. Uh, Division II specifically has nine proposals they're going to vote on at their Saturday business session. Uh, just what are some of the highlights of those proposals, the biggest impacts? Uh, can you kind of pull it down to some of the, the, the most notable, if you will? Yeah, so I, as you mentioned, I think this year's convention is going to be um, a little bit different than previous conventions with what's happening on Thursday. Um, so the D2 membership will take part in that association-wide vote on the new Constitution. There will also be a D2 specific session Thursday afternoon um, for the division to conduct um, a vote on one proposal um, related to that new Constitution that's division specific. But as you mentioned, um, the division will have its traditional D2 business session on Saturday. Um, there are nine proposals, so there were six that were sponsored by the President's Council um, and three sponsored by um, the membership. I think a couple of highlights on those from the President's Council, I'll note two. Um, one deals with transfers, and it specifically indicates that um, by June 15th, if a student athlete notifies the school by June 15th, they're able to transfer without the institution um, having to um, object to that transfer. They're just able to transfer without having um, to seek any type of exception from, from, their, current, from their current school. Um, and if they do that, that doesn't then guarantee them to receive athletics aid um, the following uh, academic year. There are several parts to that proposal, and I think people have wondered why are there so many parts, because um, it's really five different sections. And, the Management Council and Student Athlete Advisory Committee had pretty thorough discussions about that um, in recommending this proposal, and they felt like all five of them really do tie together, and it was necessary for them to be a part of one, one singular proposal. The other I'll note is a proposal related to football, and it's a very similar proposal um, that's either been adopted or will be um, discussed by the other divisions. It deals specifically with what can occur in the preseason, um, the, the length of the acclimatization period for football, and then the types of um, practices and types of contact that can occur during the rest of the preseason time period. There's also another part of that proposal that provides a little bit more flexibility as it relates to skill instruction and eliminates the number of football players that can participate in skill instruction during a particular time of the year. Very interesting. You mentioned SAC having some input on the, the transfer proposal, uh, and I want to ask about a proposal that Division II SAC itself put forward to the Management Council and then the, the President's Council um, related to civic engagement. Uh, just what is that proposal and why was it important for SAC to, to put it forward? Yeah, so I had the fortunate opportunity to be able to attend those national SAC meetings um, where the student athletes talked about this proposal and and why they thought it was important um, to recommend. And it, it really comes down to a couple of things. The student athlete voice is critical to the national SAC, and they feel like um, election day is an important time um, for them to exercise that voice, not only as a student athlete, but as just a student. 
And so they uh, wanted to ensure that election day was a time not only for student athletes to be able to vote, but even more than that, to be able to participate in activities on their campus or maybe activities within the community around civic engagement. And they felt like the only way that they really could have a true opportunity for student athletes to exercise their voice from a fairness standpoint was to ensure all student athletes were not participating in any type of countable activities on that day. Very cool. Uh, aside from the business happening um, Saturday and Thursday, just what else is happening in Division II that week of convention? Uh, what else would you like the, the membership to know about that week? Yeah, so obviously lots of governance and, and membership meetings that need to um, occur, but it's also a time, what I mentioned, is to celebrate um, the accomplishments of the division. So during the Saturday business session, we'll be able to award the Division II Award of Excellence. So we'll be able to recognize um, three schools or conferences for what they did in 2021 as it relates to either student athlete leadership, student athlete impact, um, impact in their um, community. Um, the National SAC also has an award where they recognize faculty members. It doesn't have to be a faculty athletic rep, but it's a, a faculty member who has made an impact on student athletes and just students um, in general. So we'll have an opportunity for the National SAC to recognize um, those individuals. And then there's also educational programming that occurs. Um, on Friday um, of the convention, there'll be D2 specific sessions. We also have a D2 specific keynote this year. It's Lindsay Pollock, um, who is um, a best-selling author. She talks about the generational differences um, that occur in the workforce and how those strengths and differences um, of those generations, um, how they can function together um, for success. So we're, we're looking forward to that keynote. And then there'll also be some educational programming that'll happen after the convention um, in a virtual format. So those that are unable to be there in January um, in a couple of weeks could take part in some of that virtual education. Well, a lot going on. Terry, thank you so much for joining us and giving us a, a preview of what Division II um, has to offer and what, what will come during convention week. Um, really appreciate the time. Yep, thanks Corbin. Of course. That's it for this Inside the NCAA. Until next time.